Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about our three biggest contributing factors to our wealth. I'll let you start it off, Kirby. Um, the for me, the number one thing, and I'm just we just gonna go back and forth. But for me, the number one contributing factor to my wealth was understanding that the information is already out there, or the blueprint is already out there. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just got to follow blueprints. And I remember when I first started off um, and I heard Dave Ramsey for the first time. And my lifestyle, I mean, in my life, you know, growing up in an inner city, you concrete jungle, I was always told the white man is never here to help the black man. And when I listened to Dave Ramsey, you know, he's unapologetically a redneck. And of course, as soon as you hear redneck in the black community, you think, oh, he don't like black people, right? So I still listen. I mean, I don't know what happened that day that, would made, that made me not turn the station. I don't know what happened that day. But he was given information. And the only thing I could think of was he's not saying, oh, if you're white, this will work. He's just saying, if you live below your means, you can get financial freedom. So I eliminated all the, you know, childhood trauma, all the, you know, the stereotypes that they, you know, poured into my life growing up. And I just said, I'm going to listen because he didn't break it down in race. He just said, if you do this, it will work. So I'm going to replicate what he said to see if it'll work and it worked. But then that's what gave me that understanding that people are willing to help. It's just people are not willing to receive the help or understand the help or listen to the help because they have different stereotypes like the rich are evil. They don't want to help nobody. They just want, they just want to keep the money to themselves. But the first thing is the blueprints are already out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just follow the blueprint that's out there. I know that was a little long, so I'll try to shorten it up on the next one. But go ahead. <laughs> no, it's like, um, yeah, I would say my first one is probably because we're going to go back and forth, but I'd say my first one is being consistent in what I'm doing all around. So consistent in the steps I'm taking, consistent in what I have to do, income coming in, investing that income, looking for the next deal, being motivated with that consistency, always looking towards the future rather than, I mean, I know people say you got to enjoy life now and I do, it's not that I don't, but I'm constantly looking at where do I want to be in my future and how much harder do I need to work to obtain that in the future? I, I look at, you know, what where can I be in the future to look back on the past in a sense, like to see what I've accomplished. And say, I don't really know exactly how to explain it, but being consistent in everything that I do. It's not like I'm on a budget and then I break the budget and then, oh, I'll get better next week. Or, you know, I was saving one month and then the next month I just decided to go blow all the money. No, it's consistent. Every it's like. I run our income, our household, like a business, like I, every it's, it's always got a purpose. All of our money coming in and going out has a purpose. So that would be my first one. What's your second one? Number two would be living below my means. I mean, I was the paycheck to paycheck rat raised guy. I was, I mean, when I say I was the epitome of it, I was more than paycheck to paycheck. I was my paycheck plus some credit cards, Plus going out, you know, gambling, drinking the whole nine. I was past my paycheck. Money I was losing, it was way, way past the little paycheck that I was making. Um, but living below my means, that was something that really, that was the light switch. I mean, that was, once I saw it, I was just like, oh. And the thing was, was at first it was just living below the means of my paycheck. But then I saw the other side of it is, oh, I can live below the means of my paycheck. So now it's not going to Wendy's five times a day. I I did I did cut back, Alex. But back then I was going out. I was going out every every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, but it was not only cutting that back, and then I saying, okay, I I knew how to cook. My mama taught me how to cook, but I just was like, oh, you know that I can just go get it faster if I just go to the restaurant. But once I start cutting back on that and realize, oh, life wasn't that bad, and actually cooked every now and then. And life wasn't that bad and not having every premium channel in cable, not going out to the clubs and going to party all the time. And I still was okay. I still was still breathing. Life was not over. 
um, yeah, I lost some people that I thought was friends, but were they really friends if I wasn't, if I'm not trying to better myself? And they are upset because I'm trying to better myself. So, but, the, and then I add the aspect of adding income on top of living below my paycheck means, but then adding more income to give me that nut or that extra, um, extra volume of money so I could deploy it in other avenues of investment. That was my number two that really changed and multiplied my way of uh, growing up. I'd say my number two is relationships. So knowing people that are business oriented, surrounding yourself with those people, because those people, and I've learned this in, it may be hard for our people to understand. They'd be like, well, how does, you know, just hanging out with a millionaire going to make you a million dollars if they don't give you the money? But the thing is, when you hang out with different people, and I know a handful, they are constantly looking for the next deal, whether it be with you in regards to stocks, real estate, whether it be with, you know, someone I know in the trucking industry who has the business mind as far as running fleets. And also, ha I've noticed a lot of truckers also have interest in real estate. So whether it be someone like that, whether it be someone in e-commerce, it's someone that you can constantly learn from and they can teach you the way that they had success and the way they run deals. And there's so much knowledge to learn that can make you more efficient and better as an investor, as an individual to be better at the game that you're playing at. So hanging around these people can improve you to be more efficient and you'll learn that with knowledge and taking action with that knowledge, you can obtain more deals a lot faster than someone that just simply doesn't have those connections or those contacts. Um, and including in those relationships, the sh a strong one I have to go with is having the right spouse. Because uh, if I didn't have the right spouse, I would be moving at a much slower, much slower pace. So having the right spouse is very, very important. But what's oh, your... before I hit my number three, yeah, before I hit my number three, I'm gonna add, I wanna add just something to that. When you the one that the part that you said where people say just hanging out with the millionaire, how will you become a millionaire if you don't if he or she doesn't give you the money? It's you develop the habits when you're when you're hanging around people that have what you're trying to obtain. You will start seeing their habits. You'll start seeing nuances and seeing what they're doing in their everyday life, and then you will pick up the habits. That's all it is to making money, being disciplined, having the same habits, and just keep doing it over and over and over again over a long period of time. But you start seeing those habits and you start picking them up, and then you start looking at what they're looking at from the different angles and viewpoints that they're looking at. And so you just pick up those nuances, and then that's another thing But having relationships do. And then that's why they say if you if you uh, broke and you have four friends as millionaires, you'll become a fit. I know. To add on to that, you, like, mm -hmm. sorry, go, go ahead. No, no. To add on to that, I would say like, because especially like, I'll just use the example when I'm like contacting agents, like listing agents, and trying to like make an offer. And the whole time I'm texting Kirby, like, all right, so how am I doing? <laughs> like, what goes next? You know, he's like, any, he, you know, Kirby will give me all these different points, and I feel like a pro. But in the background, really, it's just like Kirby's just like, all right, do this, do that. <laughs> but like in the end, the deal works out. And then, you know, I mean, it's a matter of me taking action, but I'm like feeding off the advice Kirby's giving me and then taking action. And then I have that property, then it's rented out and then there's equity up potential and then there's income coming in. So that's that's how you do it. I save my money. It's my it's 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 I'm accountable to save my money. I'm responsible to save the money, the capital to buy that property. But then learning and having that knowledge off of someone who is skilled in that space and then feeding off of that and then taking action to then do what I'm learning to do. And that that's really, you know, that's how you make money by surrounding yourself with with people that are in that space. But sorry, go ahead. Um, no, you no, you good because I'm I'm about to delay my number three one more time. Hey, y'all, I'm just letting y'all know. I got to give a public service announcement. Alex don't know I know this, <laughs> but Alex is in a race to get his next property before me. I know he is. I know he is. I just, that's what he's doing. He, he's behind <laughs> the scenes. He's pulling all kinds of strings and levers, but I'm going to catch him. I'm going to catch him. Just, just wait. But okay, my number three, my number three, my number three is, and this is, 
honestly, the thing that took me from just being, you know, saving, investing, saving, investing, you know, I had, you know, a pretty, pretty decent sized net worth. But what took it parabolic was don't spread your money too thin. I mean, all over the Internet, all over uh, financial news, you always hear the word diversify, 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 especially when you talking about the stock market. And um, I heard a, a video clip from Warren Buffett and he said, diversification is great. Diversification is, you know, if you want to be a C student, you still graduate, but you graduate as a C. But you will really find the max potential in your portfolio if you really dig down into an investment and investments, find the one great investment and pile a lot of cash into that investment. Once I heard that video and then I started thinking about it and then I said, OK, I'm going to do the work instead of just saying, oh, I'm just going to buy 20 stocks. And then when one goes up, then great. And then the other ones fail. Then OK, whatever. But I got that one, you know, feel like playing the lottery. But when I stopped going with the diversification of buying 20 and 30 stocks and I said, I'm just going to do the work and wait till I'm to buy the one stock and then. I did the work, did the work, did the work, and then I found the, the the stock. And the first time I ever did it was Bank of America back in, I believe, 2010, I want to say. I'm getting my years mixed up, but 2010, 2009, somewhere around there. And and what I did was I did the work, did the work, did the work. I saw that uh, Citibank did a reverse split, and that was – that was uh, that was catastrophic for the investors that were in there. And I'm just looking at the nuances of, you know, the bailouts and companies paying it back, even in the auto industry. And I'm just doing the research, doing the research, doing the research. And then um, I saw that Bank of America was in a hard times place and took a lot of money from the federal government, just like somebody else. But I was doing the work, looking at the balance sheet, looking at how much money they took in, how much profit they're making in this slow growth environment of 2009, but and how much money was going to the going to the federal government to pay back that bailout money. And then I started calculating, just doing work. It took me about three or four months of just doing real work. And then I just start plugging money into the stock. I mean, at the time when I started plugging money, I didn't know that was going to be the all time low, but I'm plugging money, plugging money, plugging money. And then I just did that. I just focused on that one stock, put my money there, and then I let it rise. I mean, I let it rise enough so I can go buy my first house when I came to Florida and cash. That's just how it, that's, and then from then on, I said, I'm going to condense my portfolio down to just a few and then just plug as much money as I can uh, as possible in there instead of just spreading my money all over the place. And then if I did get a stock to run, I make a couple of thousand dollars. I started going for tens to hundreds of thousand dollars after that point. Yeah, I'm going to have to steal your number two. And I agree with all your points, but your number two is a big one, too, because I think this is one that everybody would struggle with is living below your means and it's because if you do change your lifestyle which you know i did in the beginning you're going to get friends family especially that will tell you why don't you just spend some of your money you're doing so good you're earning a lot of money why don't you buy a new car your car isn't running that good why don't you take your wife out on lavish trips why don't you go on a cruise why don't you take your wife shopping why don't you're going to get all that. And it's, I think it's easy for someone that doesn't have that control over them, their own actions or themselves to say, okay, you know what, maybe I should go out and do all the stuff that people are telling me to do. A lot of people allow others to control or dictate the actions in their life. And it shouldn't be that way. You have to remain in control and you have to live below your means uh, in order to have that excess of capital to invest for you know, in, in real estate or whatever it is that you're trying to invest in, uh, living below your means is also going to give you the excess once you start to make passive income to where you're not dependent on your job. I think, you know, once once you start inflating your lifestyle, uh, you're you're a slave to that job. You're locked in and the job knows that they have you. That company knows that they have you. But if you keep your expenses very low and 
I mean, lower than people making less money than you as well. You will have that excess in capital or that excess in income to, you know, you have that freedom basically because freedom is going to depend on how much income is coming in, but also at the same time, how much debt you're obliged by, how much you are actually obligated to pay per month and what has you trapped. So that would be, yeah, I'd have to steal your number two. That would be my number three. So what you're saying is don't take advice from broke people. Exactly. <laughs> don't take financial advice from broke people. Yeah, absolutely. Don't do that. All right, hey, y'all. But that's, well, that's our three keys to uh, building our wealth. Those are the three keys. Hopefully those views and that insight will give you insight to change your financial journey and maybe put an oomph in your net worth and bring more passive income into your life. With all that being said, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video. And Alex, I'll see you later. We're going to go to a restaurant. <laughs> I'm going to go bankrupt, guys. <laughs> I'll drop, I'll drop the GoFundMe in the link down below. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.